Welcome to my presentation. Um, so you see the title of my presentation, but before I move on to uh, my presentation, I would like to introduce who I am. Um, so I'm a SLAT student, Second Language Acquisition and Teaching. Um, so I'm almost done with the program. So on Tuesday I have my two camps, and my presentation has nothing to do with my um, dissertation project. So um, my journey into CMES, Center for Middle Eastern Studies, started last May when I was um, going through this um, appointment process with the CMS staff, um, people working, people who had the ch we were in charge. So um, they told me that we're going to have, we have a project within the Western Consortium, and we're planning to have online classes, Turkish classes for third year English, oh, third year Turkish, sorry. So um, with that in mind, and I was really interested in the topic, and I was really excited because my MA uh, thesis was about technology as well. So I thought this is the opportunity for me to get into that. But the concept was quite different because what I did in my MA was um, computer-assisted language learning, or computer-enhanced, um, or internet-enhanced, or web-based enhanced, or web -based enhanced um, language learning. But this one is quite different because this is totally online. This is distance education. So we don't have classroom, which means we have to create our four walls, our room, our classroom, in the uh, arena of the internet or computer. So with that in mind, I'm in the project. So the title is From the Traditional Classroom to the Virtual Classroom, which means we don't have classroom. But we're on online. So online this is a tradition to teach Turkish at the University of Arizona. So why do I have these three different um, bases? I was really excited. I'm going to be in the online program and I will do something really good. And this is something about my first language. This is Turkish. So I was happy when I got into uh, the program step by step things started to change. So, so seeing the problems, the challenges, so, well, I started feeling unhappy because, well, it is not that much easy to have this online platform where all the students will be online and we will deliver language, we will teach language, and language means interaction. So if it is interaction, the platform that we're in should enable students to interact, like group work activities, pair work activities, because they need to talk to each other. It cannot be teacher to teacher, teacher to student, or student to teacher. It should be among the students as well. So do we have such a platform? We did. We had Canvas. Well, we used the um, free version of that program, which did not allow us to facilitate group work or pair work activities among students. That was the biggest challenge for us. So what we did, I was looking for something. And I had, I was looking for remedy. I had a lot of, you should do that, you shouldn't do that. That was on, on my part, on the part of other people who were giving me some advice or giving me some tips on directions. But what I was looking for was a platform or a learning management system that can facilitate that course. Because we don't have classroom, we have to create our classroom in this online arena. Mm -hmm. So that took me to some important points. So what I need is a platform that can enable a shift from the traditional classroom to the virtual classroom. So it should enable language teaching and learning it should enable reading, writing, listening, speaking, culture, vocabulary, grammar. Because the course we were expected to teach was a main course, which, mean, which means it covers all the skills. We are not focusing on just one skill. So we have to teach everything within the scope of that course. So we need something really good to deliver that content. So we need to see students' registration. We need to administrate. We need to keep attendance, and we need something to deliver the content to 
course content, it should enable us to create activities and tasks, and it should allow us to uh, manage documents, and it should give us the access to use that platform by using different um, devices. And it should have a calendar that students can see everything because they do not have something concrete in their hands. Everything is online. So um, it should enable students, engage student engagement. It should enable assessing and testing. So as a student at the University of Arizona, I had experience with some of the learning management systems. So I used Digital as a student. I used Moodle as a student too, on uh, NiceNet and Blackboard. And I used Canvas and Adobe Connect as a GA, as a graduate assistant as well. But before coming into that program, I did not use them as a GA or to deliver a course, but I used the others as a student. So there are a lot of them. <coughs> Canvas, the first program that we used to teach a course titled Turkish 403. So we had a core, we had a content, and we had our materials, which were basically reading, um, and which need to be improved as well. So um, with that in mind, with the limitations of that course, with the platform, the learning management system, I thought, this does not work. We need something much better that can facilitate students. And my endless inquiry took me to D2L, which I use as a student, and Adobe Connect, which I never used before, but I was introduced by some people from the tech department, and thanks to Ahmed, we discovered it. And I went and researched on the internet, and there are a lot of universities using D2L and Adobe. So, what is D2L? I'm sure you are all familiar with it. So, right now, everything turns into D2L. So, what I did, I spent a whole semester preparing a new course for the spring semester. So it's, right now it's under progress. Um, so I formed a content. So first we made a request for the course uh, through Do2L, and then I came up with a content. So here you see the content. We, in, we have 16 weeks in the whole semester and the first two weeks were allocated for orientation. It might sound two weeks for orientation. Well, sometimes even two weeks are not enough. Because students need these multiple literacies to move around in these platforms. And it's not really easy. So in the first week, we delivered the course content. So what we're going to cover in terms of topics in terms of grammar, vocabulary reading, all the skills. And then what we're going to do and what tools we're going to use. That was the first introduction. And then we took the second week to practice it, to rehearse it, to um, see how it works or what problem we might come across. And starting from the third week, we, really, we were really teaching language and students were really in the, in the language. So the, Sorry. <laughs> so um, we had what I thought the pedagogy that we should allow in that course should be socio-culturally responsive, which means it should bring a lot of social and cultural elements into that course. So I try to focus on topics that are social and so cultural, but also aimed to deliver some vocabulary, some grammatical points as well even though they are third year Turkish, because I heard that some people saying, at higher levels we do not teach grammar. Well, to me, we need to teach it, because there are complicated grammatical points which cannot be delivered at the lower levels, and we, at the higher levels we need to teach. But of course, of course the methods or the uh, pedagogy that we apply might change. So firstly, we focus on politics. This was our um, broad umbrella for the third week, and within that, we looked at a specific topic that was the Kurdish problem in Turkey. And then in the second week, in the fourth week, we focused on health. And then we focused on um, bird flu 
here. And then we moved on language and identity, and we focused on the problem of um, education in mother tongue. And then next one, we moved on environment, and within that, we focused on a dam, which is called Hassan Cape, uh, as, I'm sorry, a historical city. And the problem with that city is the government um, plans to build a dam which will ruin the whole city, and we will, which will kind of um, get rid of, which will um, cause a ruin there as well. And then in the seventh week, we focus on cinema, and we particularly focus on an, on an artist who is called Turkan Shuray, who is very, very famous in Turkey. And then we moved on economy, and we focus on the relation between Turkey and IMF. So, and then we have history, and within history, we focus on women sultans during the Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. And okay. there are series, um, there are two famous series, which is, which the first one is about Hurem, and the second one, second one is about Kursem, which is still uh, on, on, the, uh, on TV. And then we moved on um, women in Turkey, and then we focus on famous women in Turkey. And then we moved on to the minorities in Turkey, and then in this one, we focused on the population exchange between Greece and Turkey. And then we moved on literature, and here we focused on Nasrettin Hoca, who is a very famous figure in literature in terms of oral stories. And then we moved on religion and um, beliefs, and then we fo particularly focused on um, interesting superstitions for the, um, for the um, for two weeks, and then in week 15, students will present their final projects because they have two major assignments. One is midterm, and the other one is final project. So we'll talk about this uh, in a minute as well. So here you see the projects as well. So this is the overall content of the course. So in we have 16 weeks. The first two weeks are allocated for orientation, and the next 12 weeks are for the content delivery, and the last two weeks, um, the first, uh, the week 15 is for the presentation of the final projects, and the last week is for a general wrap up of the course. So, let's see what we have in terms of content delivery. So what I did, because we meet, Two to twice a week, on Mondays and on Wednesdays. So, I I divided the uh, weeks into two days, Monday and Wednesday, and within each day, we have different sections. So, um, try to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so that's a gamble, which means before coming to the classroom, mm -hmm. students are expected to do something. They have to read something, listen something, research about something, so that they can be ready for what is going to be read and what is going to be focused on uh, during the classroom. So let's have a look at this one. So keep in mind, this. Week three is about politics, and in politics we, we specifically focus on um, the Kurdish issue. So, there are three activities they have to do before coming to the classroom. In the first activity, they're going to make a research about the minorities or the ethnicities within the border of Turkey, and they will, I provided a link. Of course, they don't have to use that link. They can go and search their place. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of information about that. And in the second activity, I draw the attention to the Kurdish ethnicity in Turkey, and I ask them to gather information about their language and culture. And in the third activity, they have a reading text. They need to read the text at home because we have just 75 minutes, and we do not have time to lose. So we need to deliver the content. So they need to do the reading at home. So, this is for before coming to the classroom. So how about during the classroom? 
So during the classroom, you see the files here. So they have a reading text, which is this one. And they also have the audio version of that reading text. So every week, if they have a reading text, they have the audio as well. And I can click on this one and show what the reading text looks like. So here is basically the reading text. In reading text, I highlighted some words. These are the keywords I try to draw their attention to. The purpose is because sometimes students focus on vocabulary or grammar and lose the meaning. Mm -hmm. So what, I need to, what they need to do, just focus on the keywords and then try to understand them from the context so that they would not like, feel depressed or overwhelmed um, by the number of vocabulary in the text. So this is basically the text. And towards the end of the text, they have comprehension questions. So before coming to the classroom, they will read it, try to answer the questions, if possible, if they can find a, find a response to the um, questions. And during classroom, we will cover all these points. <clears throat> All right, and then we have activities. But before starting the activity about the reading text, we cover what they did before coming to the classroom. So they were expected to gather information about ethnicities in Turkey with particular focus on Kurdish. So during, at the beginning of the course, our meeting, we meet and we talk about these issues. We put the students into groups by using Adobe Connect. We will talk about that later on. And then we move on to the text. And with, after reading the text, responding to the questions, we put the students into groups and they respond to the questions in groups and then they come to the main room and report back. I'll show that later on. And then around the text, we have some grammatical points. Because the reading text, with the reading text, we aim to teach something cultural, we aim to improve their reading skill, we aim to um, improve their comprehension, but also their grammar as well. So within the reading text, I draw some sentences. So these sentences are from the reading text. So we're still on the reading text. So these, in the, the highlighted words, I don't know if you can see them clearly, they're at the end of two sentences. So these are the grammatical points that we aim to teach. So what we do, we put the students into groups, they discuss the sentences, what is in what is particular, what is the point, what is the focus in the sentence, especially the highlighted word. So they try to discover the rule over there. And then when they come to the main room, we discuss about it, and then we talk about the grammatical rule. And then related to this gram grammatical rule, we have some other activities. And apart from that, I provide students with some information, some introduction about the grammatical point, which is um, the concern of that particular activity. So here you see the explanations for the grammatical point. If they would like to have um, access to explanation, they can go and read that explanation. They can see a lot of examples here as well. Um, so back to Monday. And then they have an activity which should be done at home. So in this activity, they're going to do something, and this something is about writing a story. So they, have, they are given a topic, and they are also asked to use the keywords provided here. And by the way, the words are from the reading text, and the purpose is to help students practice the words by writing something. And also they're asked to build sentences that cover the grammatical points um, as well. And they're asked to highlight the sentences while writing their story. So that we can see whether they covered, whether they understood the, uh, the grammatical point, and whether they are able to use the words as well. And they're going to post their stories where? In discussion, here. D12 discussion. So here, you can see it. So week three, they have the explanation for the activity here, and here we see their posts. So here, there are seven posts in total. 
So when we go here, by the way, I got the permission from the students to show their names because I could not hide, um, hide them. So this is one of the posts written by one of the students. And then if you go down, we can see the other stories as well. So back to our content. All right. So we were on Monday, and uh, in, on Monday, we talked about before coming to the classroom, during the classroom, and after, which was the activity. Now it's uh, for our second meeting. We're going to meet on Tuesday this time. So we follow the same pattern here as well. So before coming to the classroom, during the classroom, and after the classroom. So every session is, consists of three parts. So before the classroom, they have to do something on Google Voice. They have two questions, very short questions, and the aim is to practice the grammatical point they covered in the classroom. Well, when they answer that, these two questions, they will produce the sentences, and we will see whether they can build the sentences uh, with the particular grammatical point in mind or not. And then, when we meet, we have some other activities. So, they wrote a story, and we will talk, uh, during the classroom, we talk about the stories they wrote, and we put the students into groups, they discussed it, what they wrote, why they wrote something like this, and then we moved on to different things. And this time, we had another grammatical point, which, was, which is about the types of verb <coughs> in Turkish language, which is very, very important, because verb determines almost everything in Turkish language. So, um, referring back to the, our reading text, we ask the students to underline the verbs and then tell them to the whole classroom. And then we put the students into groups to discuss the verbs. What function do these verbs have by referring to these questions? So these questions give some information about the types of verb and their function in the sentence, I mean, in the reading text. And then we design some other activities around this particular grammatical point as well. And then we did our session, we are finished with our session. Now it is time for homework, for assignment. This time they have something different, which is quite related to the, what, what they did in their D12 discussion. So in D12 discussion, on Monday, they wrote a story. Now. They are going to choose one of the stories written by one of their peers. They are going to continue the story with particular focus on the verbs. So they need to build, like, how many sentences? Um, the story should be, the story should be 12, 50 sentences, and they need to have two sample sentences for each type of verb. There are two, four types of verbs, which means they need to have eight particular sentences with, um, with this um, grammatical point, but of course they can write more than that if they like. So, just to, I know it sounds a lot of um, information. So we had Monday, we had Tuesday, and in each session we had three steps, before, during, and after. And the, the whole program is designed in this way. But during um, my ongoing process, on this ongoing process with the students, I asked them to report what problems they see in the course. And one of the students told me that, well, it would be better if we have a chart for vocabulary. Because in Turkish, there are a lot of suffixes. Sometimes even a letter can change everything. So we need to see the bare form of the words. So starting at week nine, I started building these charts as well. I'll go and revise, the, uh, build the charts for the other weeks as well. Um, so, right now, here, vocabulary list, this, this, uh, this vocabulary list does not exist in the previous weeks because before that the students did not report such a problem. So right now, getting feedback from the students, well, like we thought, me and Ahmed, having this chart would be really useful. They have the words, Okay, 
So on the um, in the red yellow part, they have the Turkish word, and in the white section, they have the English equivalent of these words, mm -hmm. so that they can see the bare form because. Turkish language has a lot of suffixes, so sometimes even a letter can change a lot of things. That's why they need to see the bare form and how to conjugate these ver words or verbs. All right. And within that program, we also use some apps like Google Voice, um, Educanon, um, Voice the Red. I can show you um, Educanon. So here. Um, it's week 11, which is about minorities uh, in Turkey, and then it's about the population exchange between Greece and Turkey. They have a YouTube video, they will watch the video, and on the um, right side, or yeah, on the right side, they have questions. The video is seven minutes long, and they have 12 questions in total. Of course, this is teacher video and video. They do not see the uh, view in this way. Um, Mohammed Ansari just showed how Educan works. So they watch the video, and then there's um, certain periods of time where the video stops and the question pops up, and the students have to respond to be able to watch the rest of the video. So this is one of the activities through Educanon. And then here, I um, organized an activity about economy. So they have a text here, and they, they're asked to compare the economy between, in, in the United States and in Turkey. They, I ask them to focus on the differences and similarities, with the particular focus on using conjunctions, conjunctions of comparison and contrast. So this is one of the other activities that we did. So how about the delivery of the course? So we have everything in D12. So where is our classroom? For our classroom, we use Adobe Connect. So we go to, how about for moving on that, I should talk about Dropbox, Grace, quizzes as well. So um, in discussions, we have 12 weeks. And in each week, there are 12 different topics. They focus on certain topics and certain grammatical points as well. So here you can see the rest of the discussion um, topics. And then in Dropbox, again, we have 12 weeks. Students have to do something at home, and they have to submit their posts, um, their uh, assignments um, through um, Dropbox. So they can see, we can see here how many posts um, have been submitted on, and in here students can follow the due dates as well so that they, they know when the due date is. And quizzes. That's important too. So in total, students had 20 vocabulary quizzes. Four of them were review quizzes and the others were about the reading text or listening text they covered in the classroom. So I can show one of them. So what do we have in the quiz? So here, in the first question and in the second question, they have matching. So they have English words and they have to match them to the Turkish equivalents. Oops. And in the third question, they have fill in the blanks um, activities. So they are provided five sentences with blanks. They have to go back to the reading text, focus on the highlighted words, and complete the sentences. And then they have true false questions, and they have sentence building, long answer sentence building um, um, activities. So they are provided a word here, it's from the reading text, and they have to build sentence use a sentence by using this word. So this is basically um, the uh, quizzes as well. So grades. Students can see what, what accounts for their grades. So where they will um, kind of get all these grades. So attendance is important. So they have four points for attendance. And participation in the activities. 10 points, and then quizzes. We have 20 quizzes, 
and that makes about 20% of their score. And they have discussions, 12 discussions, that makes 20% of their participation in the course. And then Dropbox assignment, they have um, 24 points here, because these assignments are more complicated than the discussions. And then midterm, 10%, and then final project, 20%. So the total of all these grades makes the, uh, make their um, um, final grade. So now we can move on Adobe Connect. So Adobe Connect is embedded in D12, and it's the platform that we use to deliver the course content. So firstly, I will try to introduce Adobe Connect, and then my students, our students are online. We will do some activities. Okay. <coughs> there we go. The students are online. Okay, so what is Adobe Connect? So Adobe Connect is a platform that enables online or synchronous communication or video conferencing among <coughs> students. And it's a really, really nice platform. So for the layout, you can customize your layout by having these different sections, or you can um, have some already prepared layouts. So I use an um, already prepared uh, layout. So what is, these two buttons are really important. So within meeting, it is important to keep in mind, if you would like to record your meeting or session, you have this button here. Oops. Oh, you have started it? Sorry. Okay, um, so Ahmed has started the recording. The red button on the right side shows that you are recording your session. So if you would like to stop it, you have to come here and stop it. And within this Adobe Connect, you can have a separate section that, stu that you can only see. So your students will not see it. So right now, students can see this screen, but I'm going to create something new and they will not be able to see that. I'm going to use that part to take notes for myself as, a, as, a, as an instructor. So my section is here, but well, it's really small. I, I need to fix the, make it really small. So in this section, <coughs> um, so it's, it's just me who sees this section. Students so cannot see here. So I can take notes here if I like, and they will not be able to see it but they will just see this part. Okay. So, and within that, we can also, if you would like to end the meeting, you have to come here and end the meeting. You can pause it. You can do a lot of things here as well. So, and layout, as I said, you can have some ready-made uh, layouts or you can customize it by creating different pods. So these things are called pods. These are pods. And within pods, we have a lot of useful um, tools. So share. Here, if I click on this one, just then I'll hide this one. So um, let's assume that we don't have that. Students so now just see that blank, blank thing. And then if we would like to enable it, we have to come to here and share, add a new share. And our platform comes, uh, it's <coughs> right here. And students can see that much. You can enlarge it by just coming here and then pulling it down. So students can see that as well. So what can I do here? I can share my screen with my students. I can share a document or I can share a whiteboard. So let's try whiteboard. So if you click on this one, 
They see it on the whiteboard, and we can type here. So what we need to do, come to text, and here, okay, right now they can see that. And if, we'd like to, if I would like to get rid of that, I need to click this button and come here, get rid of it. So you can do a lot of things by using this whiteboard as well. I'm going to hide it for now. So, um, and you can also here, you can see other um, uh, whiteboards or shares that you have done by just going here. So these are our previous shares with the students. <coughs> So notes, I can have some notes. If I click on here, it will come here. Okay, so I'll just hide this one. And now we don't have a note, a section that where we can take notes. So what I will do, I'll come here, come to notes, and I click this one, and now I have a part notes 11 so I can take my notes there and my students cannot see those these notes so attendees you, if you click on this particular button you will not see the attendees it's gone so if you would like to see you have to click on this one and then you have to bring it to the right now students cannot see that because it's in the private section for myself I'll have to pull it here so that students can see it um, and then I can enable video, students can see me, and I can enable chat, it could be a private chat as well with a particular student if you would like to say something. And then we can share files, we can share web links, we can do polls, if you would like to like, let's meet uh, on Friday, we would like to ask students and we can make a poll and ask <coughs> students what they think about it, yes or no. And then breakouts, that's very important as well. That's the basic are like to me. So I'll just make this one smaller so that you can see what's happening. Okay, these breakouts are very important because when I started my job in, in, in the whole semester, the basic problem was putting students into groups or pairs to interact. In Canvas, we couldn't do that. So that's why I was in a search for something much better. Now we can do that. Before moving on to parts and uh, breakouts, so here when you come on to the student, you have to, you can start a private chat with the student. When students come into the room, you have to enable their mic. Without your permission, they cannot speak. So you have to enable the students. You can enable their video, you can um, enable drawing as well. Uh, request a share, screen share. So when you would like your students to share their screen with you, you just click on this one and the students receive a kind of pop-up and it says your instructor um, wants you to share your screen with him or her. And you can change the role of students, you can make the student host, but because with that, you can make the student host, you might lose everything because if the student does not know the interface of that platform really well, they can take the whole control. <laughs> And you can make the presenter with, uh, if you make them present, they will just be able to do the presentation and they do not have the control. You still have the control. And then you can, if a student speaks a lot, you can unmute the students or mute the student. <laughs> okay, so what is breakout? That's very important. So, um, I'll get rid of these breakouts firstly and then show how it works. It doesn't allow me. Okay, this, I guess this is standard, okay. So in here, you have to come here to create groups within your platform. So here we have, oh, this guy, I got rid of it. It takes some time. <laughs> Great. Okay, right now we have no breakout. That means we have no groups. So how, how I'm going to create groups? By clicking this button, this plus button, you create groups. By the way, all the students are online. So I can create three different groups. So what I need to do, 
I can pull the students into the groups by just going on their name and then pulling doesn't allow me. Anyway, you can start, come. Start. Yeah. Um, you can come <coughs> here, like this is one of the students, and then you can pull the students into any group that you want. So I'm going to pull that student into group one. Right now he's here. And I'm going to pull that student into group two. And then this one into group three. And then we'll have two more students. And that's it. So I guess it's better we move that student to another group because he's alone. <laughs> All right, so no need for that third group. OK, right now we have two groups. So what we do, they are still, they still can hear me. I'll activate the voice. Arkadaşlar, beni duyuyor musunuz? Arkadaşlar. Beni duyuyor musunuz? That's great. Right now students are everybody can hear me. <laughs> okay. Because I'm using the um, I'm not using the plug for the cable um, that is equal. So what I need to do, they can hear me right now, but I um, I will not allow that um, for now. Okay, so right now they are in groups. But everybody still can hear me. To start the groups, we have to click this one. And then students will be able to be in groups and will not be able to hear each other. So these students will just be in their own group and they will be able to hear each other but not the other group. And they will be in, in their own group, they will just talk and then will not be able to hear the other group. So. Güzel. Şimdi e, yapacağız, birazdan aktiviteleri başlayacağız. E, ama ben bir burada bir şeyler anlatmam lazım. Daha sonra başlayacağız. So, we're going to show two activities. Just to um, see how it works. Um, in the first activity, they will focus on something. Like, one of the topics that we covered uh, in the previous week. So, they are going to talk about the famous singers or artists or actors in Turkey and why they think this person is famous, why they think this person is important for them. And then in the second activity, two students will make a presentation and the rest will listen to the presentation and then they will ask questions. And to do that, I'll share my screen with the whole classroom and the student will ask for the control of my screen. Arkadaşlar? Sesim geliyor mu? Şimdi yapacağımız ilk aktivite 7. haftada e, şey yapmıştık. Sizin en çok e, tanıdığınız, e, bildiğiniz Türkiye'de aktörler veya aktrisler kimler? Bunları kendi gruplarınız içinde tartışacaksınız ve not tutacaksınız. Daha sonra da bunu tüm burada arkadaş herkese paylaşacağız. Tamam mı? Güzel. Başlıyoruz. So right now, I'm in the main room, they're in their groups, and, and I cannot hear them. To be able to hear my students, I have to go into the groups. So I'll go to the second breakout. Leila, Safiye. Leila, beni duyuyor musun? Güzel. This is like about that. <gülüyor> Leyla bir konuşabilir misin? Can you hear her? This annoys her voice. <gülüyor> uh, Aktivite anlayabildik mi yapacağımızı? Tamam. Zaten geçmişte yapmıştık. Aynısını yapacaksınız. Güzel. 
Ama konuşmanızı istiyorum. Safiye ile tartışmanızı istiyorum. Safiye sesim gelmiyor. Leyla? Ben Safiye'yi Evet ben de Safiye'yi duyamıyorum şu an. Okay, let's go to the other group. Right now in the other group. We're in the other group. And they're speaking. I said they can't attack. Shall we do? Eren orada mısın? Eren ses sesin geliyor mu Eren? Arkadaşlar ana odaya dönelim mi? Uğuracağım. Right now we're going to back, we're going back to the main room. She's not aware that she's in the main room. Safiye şu an herkes aynı odada. Hepimiz aynı yerde. Seni duyabiliyoruz biz. Okay. Right now, I'm going to going to show their screen and see what they have done. So, what to do that? We need to come to parts. Within parts, we have to come to breakouts, and we have two breakouts. So here, we can share their screen. And group one is going to talk about Muhammed. Abdullah, Eren, bu sizin ekranı. Şimdi söyleyin bakalım neler konuştunuz? Ben Kavlos'daki aktörleri sınavdım. Kemal Sunan, Halit Akçetlik'te ve Adria Naşit vardı. Hı hı. Başka Türkan Şeray var. En çok filmlerde oynayan kadın hı hı. aktör. Ve Orhan Gencebay yazdım. Orhan Gencebay sanatçı mı yoksa aktör mü? Evet öyle. Abdullah sen ne söyleyeceksin? Ben de Şener Şen söyledim. Kemal Sunal. Bir de Defne Yılmaz'ı dedim. Aynı zamanda şeye baktım ben. Açta Pekkan var. Sizden Aksu var. Onlar da şarkıcı ve oyuncu. Türkan Şoray. Evet. Teşekkürler. Şimdi diğer gruba gidiyorum ben arkadaşlar. So right now we're moving on to the other group. So what I is by the way the control is uh, it, the instructor has the control to share the screen. So it's our second group and I'm going to share their screen if they wrote something. Okay. They have something over there. Okay. Uh, uh, like you can do it orally. Who did you talk about? I talk about it. Can you talk about it?
Dr. Sanatan. She said that she was writing something, then she found herself in the main room so that she couldn't complete her sentence. Okay, so this is basically about how we conduct group work or pair work activities in our um, platform. So this is how we connect. So now we're going to do something different. This time, students will do a presentation and we'll just listen to them. Um, Muhammad Abdullah. Şimdi ben ekranı paylaşıyorum, sunum sırası sizde. So they're going to do a presentation. So what I will do, I'll share my screen. Because the student sent a PowerPoint to me. something down and I have to click on that to be able to do that. Ujum, <coughs> can you share your screen? This never happened before. It's because we're watching. Yeah, it's not something about it. Flagging arm, flagging. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> right now they can see my screen. And Muhammad, do you understand me? Great. Great. Uh, uh, uh, right now, the students can hear me and they can see my screen. So I'm going to open the PowerPoint. So they're going to make a presentation about a historical place in Turkey. Can you see the screen? Alright. There we go. Fast the evidence. Ah, uh, control sizi değil çünkü ekrandaki tam kontrolü şey demiyorum. Yansıttığım için kontrol edemiyorum. So they can see that. Apollo's name, Turkey's, Deniz ilçesinde Aydın'da bulunan bir tapınak. Çok eskide, çok eskiye dayalı. Yer yeni hasar ilçe merkezindedir. İngilizce'de dediğim adı biliyor ama Türkiye'de dediğim ilçesi olarak geçiyor. Antik kent değil ama kutsal bir mahalledir. Yunan tanrıları ile ilgili bir kutsal bir yer. Apollo tapınağı adından okunduğu üzere Apollo'ya ait bir tapınaktır. Apollo, mitolojide müziğin, sanatın, güneşin, ateşin, şiirin tanrısı ve kehanet yapan birinci tanrıdır. Birinci tanrıdır. Apollo'nun tapınağı 
içindeki yol e, kırk, e, yolda kırıklar baş, başladı. Kırıklar arabalardan e, a, arabalar yüzünden başladı. Bu yoldaki kırıklar Apollo Tapınağı Apollo Tapınağı'na zarar veriyor. O yolu kap, devlet kapattı. Başka bir yol üzerinde çalışıyorlar. Ama o yol daha bitmediği için o hala o kırık yolu kullanıyorlar ve daha hala zarar veriyor Apollo Tapınağı'na. Apollo Tapınağı e, yok olma tehlikesi var. Ee, Neden kaybolma tehlikesi? Ee, haberlerde yazıldığı üzere insanın ziyaret edesi gelmiyor, harabeye dönmüş, sütunları yok, merdivenlerden çıkayım dersen düşersin diye yazmışlar. Ee, ve fotoğraflarda gördüğümüz gibi bayağı kırıklar, çıkıklar var. Ee, o yüzden fazla ziyaretçi almıyorlar ve yola kapalı olduğu için e, harabeye dönmüş gibi e, görünüyor. Belediye yeni bir yol açıncaya kadar izin verdi. E, ancak e, yer yer çökmeler oldu. Yoldan tapınağı ayıran istinat duvarlarında çökmeye başladı. O yüzden e, tekrardan e, şey yapmaya başladılar. Düzeltmeye başladılar. Merdivenleri e, Yıkıp tekrardan aa, aa, yapmaya başladılar. Ve bu isimlerde gördüğünüz gibi Apollo tapınağını bir daha yapmaya çalışıyorlar. Bak, burada kırıklar var. Aa, bu tanrıçanın yüzünde bir kırık var. Aa, o, o, alt sahnesindeki o, o merdivenlerde, merdivenlerde kırıklar var. Aa, i̇nsanlar çıkamıyor. Aa, Doğru düzgün bir şey göremiyorsun. Ee, hepsi kırık e, içinde. Ee, üst, sol resimdeki o, onu da restore ediyorlar. Tapınağı restore ediyorlar. Ve bir de masraflı. It's time for the questions. Uh, so students are waiting for, for the appearance to ask questions if they have. Leyla, Kasabiye, sorularınız var mı? Başka soru var mı? Leyla sor bakalım. Bence, bence evet gerçekten. Şimdi insanlar gidemiyor çünkü yollar kırık, tapınak kırık. İnsanların pek fazla göreceği bir şey yok. Bence restore edildikten sonra burada ziyaret edecek yerlerden birine eklenecektir bence. Aa, aynı zamanda insanlar da doğal bir şey görmek istiyor. İşte Apollo'nun kendisi yaptığı tapınlar görmek istiyor. Ve restore edildikten sonra e, pek bir e, şey e, kıymeti kalmıyor. Bence. Tamam. So shall we finish it right here because I have to go back into the room. <laughs> So right now, this is my screen, and they can see everything on my screen. And they can also ask for the control of my screen. But right now, because I reflected it here, I cannot see the buttons on my screen. Um, so they can control my computer as well. Um, I'm going to stop it here. So we, when you click, when you come here, it says stop sharing. And then you stop sharing your screen with the students. which means I need to go unplug and then see the full screen. Okay. There we go.
Okay. So the students are still here, and then we're back into our room. Um, so I'll say just goodbye, and then we'll talk about it more. Um, arkadaşlar, duyuyor musunuz beni? Um, çok teşekkür ediyorum geldiğiniz için. Thank you very much for participating in this presentation. Um, and we are free. Thank you. <laughs> so, iyi günler. Dersi görüşürüz. Okay, so this is basically what we do with Adobe Connect. So we have, we, we create groups, they do act, um, group activities, pair work activities. They have their whiteboard, um, they write things on their whiteboard, and they produce language, they work on grammatical points, and then share with the whole classroom. They can share their screen with the whole classroom, and by sharing their, class, uh, their screen, if they have a problem, they give the control to me, and I can control their um, screen, and I can move between the slides, between their files. They can do the same thing on my computer screen as well. So this is basically about um, Adobe Connect as well. So if you would like to end the meeting, before ending, you have to come here, stop it, so that you, you do not lose your data or re uh, session. Pause or stop, we're going to stop it. And then if you would like to get out, you have to come here and then um, end meeting. Okay, and now the session is over. So, what happened on, up until this point? Right now, if you come here, it says recordings and reports. If you come click on recordings, you can see all the sessions recorded. If a student <coughs> cannot come to the classroom, he can go and click on the recording and then listen it or watch it. And if you would like to see who came to the classroom and who did not, you can see a detailed report of, echo report of everything. So, here is one of the students. So, here is a track of what he had done un up until this point. And then it's me, and then Ahmed, and then the rest of the students are below. Mm -hmm. So, you can track who is in the classroom, who is not. That gives you kind of uh, the opportunity to uh, keep the attendance as well. Okay, so um, to enter the grace, I guess um, many of you are familiar with um, D2L. So to enter the grace, we need to come here and then, for example, here, this question mark shows that the student completed the quiz and by clicking on that one, you go and see the responses of the students and if there are parts that you have to score, you score it, and then students can see it. And when students submit their quiz, um, quizzes, they can see the results as well. So it's immediate feedback. All right. So we basically talked about D2L. In D2L, we focus on content, how we form content, content, how we create modules within the content, class list that I didn't show, and discussions, dropbox, quizzes, grades, and the tools that are embedded in, uh, in <coughs> D2L. Because um, D2L has this voice thread and opt-out, all these tools, they are free in D2L. So it's free on the campus as well. If you would like to use it, why not then? And then um, attendance as well. So within Adobe Connect, we focus on course meetings, and then we focus on the layout. Within the meetings, we focus on how to change role, how to record meetings, and enable presenter only section that students will not be able to see, and end the meeting. And then this most important section is pause, because it's the part where we create all these things. And then how we create, how we share screen, how we create whiteboard, and how we create notes within that, how we um, show the attendees, and how we do not, how we disable it, and how we enable video, chat, files, all these things, and how we form 
groups or pairs within um, the Adobe Connect. So that's all about my presentation, and we presented two sample activities. And with that, so with Adobe Connect and with D2L, and after Canvas, step by step, my mood, okay, I got to do the mood. So this happiness came back because in the full semester, Canvas was really problematic for us, and now we can do all the things that we want. But still, you know, sometimes there are technical problems like the internet connection, or sometimes one of the students get kicked out of the student or out of the classroom, out of the blue. And then you have to keep in mind that once the student comes into the classroom in this Adobe Connect, you have to enable his or her um, voice. Otherwise, he or she will not be um, speak, and you, no, nobody will um, hear. And you have to keep an eye on, an eye on that because. Um, sometimes students write in the chat part, but because you are so involved in the classroom, you do not see that the student write, is writing something, oh. enable my voice. <laughs> oh yeah, please. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. If you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Great.